Hey everybody, welcome to VA3FUC. My name here is Ron. Once again, we are going to stream this live because, well, what I'm going to be talking about is a little bit of everything and nothing in particular. What do I mean by that? Well, as you may or may not know, I do a lot of 3D printing and my camera is on the wrong side of my screen here. Let me move that so I can see the screen better. There we go. And the idea of this was to be a little bit interactive. Now, I know, granted, this is being done a little bit weirdness. Now, granted, I know some of you are going to be watching this after the stream. So the, take it as it is. But I just wanted to talk to you guys about why 3D printing might be a great use for amateur radio operators. Now, you're probably going, well, yeah, it sounds a little complicated, Ron. It sounds a little hard to do. Sounds like there's a lot of technology involved. Granted, there is. But there's a lot that we can do as amateur radio operators may not think about when it comes to ham equipment. Now, take it from me, from a person that got into 3D printing by accident. Literally, it was. My friend bought a 3D printer. I didn't think anything of it until I started playing with it and started learning it. I went, you know what? This is an amazing little hobby. Like I said, it was by accident. I wasn't even thinking of getting into 3D printing, and I just fell into it. Now, if you don't know, I run another channel called CMP, Canadian Maker Project. And yeah, that does take some of my time away from this channel. Granted, this channel is a small channel. I don't expect it to go big. If it does go big, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. But my 3D printing is where I usually dabble in a lot. And I know the community in the 3D printing community. Not as well as I know the amateur radio community, but let's face it, once you're a ham, you're a ham for life, you get invited into the community just like that. So it is what it is. But let me get into what I was explaining. There are areas where I look at products and I just go, well, it seems like half baked, or I'm thinking to myself, what's a way to, you know, make it better or make it easier and not kill me in cost? Let's take the G90 for instance. G90, great little radio. But I thought about it to myself, there's a few things we can do with the G90. Let me just grab it here. This is the G90. It's an HF radio, if you're not familiar with it. It's a 20 watt QRP radio. Um, I don't know if it qualifies as QRP. Most radios are 100 watts. This thing can only go up to 20. It's about an imprint on my hand, so it's not that big. And it's it's very it has a lot of weight to it. Don't don't kid yourself. This is from it's an SDR radio, so it's able to be so compact. But when you're doing like digital work or whatever, this thing gets hot fast. And that's why they sell a bracket with a fan that goes on the back of here where the heat sink is. This is a big giant heat sink. I thought to myself, well, how can I make this better? I could buy the kit that where it slides in, has the fan, everything else. But I went, hmm, I wonder if I could build it. So it got me thinking. And now necessarily I'm not gonna build one. I'm just didn't I was just thinking about if there a way that I can make this better and more portable during uh potas and everything else. So I went on a website called Thingiverse. Thingiverse is a repository for anything and everything, 3D printing, laser cutting. It's an amazing little website. And I do recommend anybody that's ever thought about, mm, I like to design something or have something to design, go on thingiverse.com. Uh, it's the most easiest website to use. So with this radio itself, I think of a way to, you know, make it a little bit more easier to carry around. Well, I found this print right here. This is something that someone designed for 3D printing. And what it does is not only it just attaches into these two holes right here, which I have to get the screws for. And the idea is that this lifts up and then holds your radio like that. So your radio will be sitting like that, and that's going to hold it up once I put the screws in it. But it locks right into those two screws points that you're seeing right here. And it makes it so much more easier because all I have to do is when I don't need it, fold it down. When I need it, fold it out. Now, granted, I don't have it put in yet because I'm still waiting for screws that I've ordered from China. Yeah. 
it's a fun part because everything is metric. That's something that I want to wrap your heads around. Everything is metric when it comes to everywhere else in the world. The U.S. is just on the imperial system. I don't understand why they haven't turned over to metric. There might be a reason for that. I don't know. I just find it very confusing when I see, oh, you have three-fourths of the way to go. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. I'm so used to seeing like 100 kilometers or, um, uh, yeah, but it, yeah, that's what I see mostly around the world is just everybody's using metrics. So why the U.S. is still sticking to the um, other system, I don't know. But that's it. Another thing I found kind of hard to use on the G90 is the idea of the tuning of your VFO wheel right here. It's just a basic knob. Sure, it has like a rotary feel. It, it will lock on to a um, good turning on it, but it doesn't feel right. So what I did is I pulled this off and I got another part for this. Let me go grab it. This little part right here, another 3D part from Thingiverse. And what it does, it has an indent inside there. So it makes your tuning a lot more, feels a lot more right. It's easier to tune. There's a lot of grip around the sides. It makes the wheel a little bit bigger. Uh, doesn't interfere with any of the buttons, which is kind of nice. And you still can click on it. It's such a simple little print. That took me roughly two hours to print this. That's because I had the fine tuning on and everything else. But in reality, this print took no time at all to do. It's nice and thick, it's strong. Yeah, so those are the two things I've done with already with 3D printing. It just makes sense to make it easy. Another thing I've done is I built some well, with the Rilfa River coils, uh, they come with a bunch of radios. I got radios right here. I built these little holders from the 3D printer. These are meant to have a hook so they can hang them up on a wall or whatever. But what I found these handy for is hooking them on my jeans when I'm walking. I can hook up a couple of these rounds and then I can just unravel them as I go all the way to the, you know, stretch out my radios all the way out. And then when I'm done, I just pick them up. Wrap them all the way up, lock it on my back of my pocket, lock it on the back of the hoop of my pink jeans, pick up another one that's empty, go do the next one, and do the next one after that. It just makes life so much more simpler. And these only took ooh, about 20 minutes of my time to print all three of them. So, yeah, there's many uses that a lot of us don't think about 3D printing. You know, we might just go, well, hmm. I could go to a store and buy something like this too, granted. But you want to know something? If I can save myself a few minutes not going to have to do a hardware store and paying someone else to give me a piece of plastic, why would I print it myself? Third product I was designing and operating on are these. These are what I call zombie hooks. No, I'm just kidding. These, <laughs> these are what are the Wolf River Coils uh, legs. These are something I designed. The idea of this is, and it got me thinking because I was out at a poda, you know, looking at doing some poda, and I have, this is the regular end that's on it. No protection, no nothing. And when I went to a, um, uh, have you printed Yagi spacers? No, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> what it was is that I was thinking to myself, is there a way that I could make this dig into the ground a little bit more so that say if a nice good wind gust was to push my antenna over, I would have, I would have a way to anchor it down. Well, I came up with this. It's a simple design. It took me about me an hour in Tinkercad to do this. And Tinkercad is free. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how easy it is to print. So design this piece in Tinkercad to put it on the end of your antenna leg. And then when you put your antenna down, 
the ends kind of dig into the ground a little. You can press down a little and get them to dig in the ground. Then you don't have to worry about your antenna flipping over if a good wind gust comes. I've already tested it, and it did pretty well. I mean, I put the antenna together. I pushed it either way, and it actually stood up pretty well. Now, when I do it without them on, it got a lot more wobble and could fall over. Uh, matters on center of gravity and all that is fun stuff. But I found that this little piece was just what it needed just to keep it uh, stable to the ground. And also, zombies attack, you've got your weapon. <laughs> just kidding about the zombie things. But come on, we got to have some fun here and there, right? But like I said, to print this took me maybe... 20 minutes per leg no sorry it was 30 minutes per leg but i was printing at the highest quality level and it has the tightest tightest fit that i could get it for so i can take this out set up my antenna get on the air in no time flat and have some fun Also, a little bit of news. The Etsy shop will be going live in a few more hours. So if you guys have been interested in what I do with my 3D printing, which is designing signs. Um, where is one of my signs? Ah, I don't have it here. <laughs> oh, there we go. So signs like this. My VA3 FUC amateur radio station. This will be your niche. This will be your call sign, not my call sign. Your call sign would be engraved. Would be put here. And I'm charging uh, twenty five ninety nine Canadian and thirty nine ninety nine Canadian. Why two different prices? Glad you asked. The first one is going to be in this basic non colored. It's going to be a colored version. Your letters are going to be whiter than this, and your microphone stand will be in gray. Right, as you can see right now, it is in gray. And the lettering is in somewhat transparent white. Yours is going to be in full white. The other thing with this is, this is the glow in the dark edition. So this all glows up green. The microphone itself over here has a green glow within itself because I'm printing over the uh, glow in the dark stuff. So it gives that eerie green glow in the background. It actually looks phenomenal. If you've ever watched, if you ever follow me on um, Instagram, uh, you can follow me at uh, Canadian Maker PR. Um, yeah, Canadian Maker PR, I think, is what I'm using. No, it's a Canadian Maker Project for my Instagram. Shoot, I can't remember what my call, what, what I use for that one. But if you look at me on Twitter, uh, twitter.com, uh, twitter.com slash Canadian Maker PR, uh, that is my Twitter handle. I also post a lot of my videos that I work on over there too. Post a lot of my projects I work on. And this has been my latest project that I've been very happy to, to launch soon. It's a great little gift for anybody that's in the amateur radio. If you are a ham radio operator, I do recommend, I've sent these to thousands of ham radio operators. They paid me for these, okay? And everyone that has one in my community that I know personally has loved it, has raved about it, has said, why haven't you started a store selling these things? That's literally what I get told every time I give one person one of these signs. They're like, why don't you sell them? <laughs> or I sell them to them at a lower cost than I would, you know, Instagram and all that stuff. And everybody just goes, no, charge what they're worth. They are fabulous. You put a lot of effort and time into these. They look amazing. So you guys are going to have access to get order your own uh, call sign plate. So I'll hopefully have that up within a week or two. And uh, once I launch it, I'll make sure there's a pin up in the comments in this video. So if you're watching this already and there's a pin up comment, sign up. Last thing I want to say is, my God, it's been a fun little ride. Um, I'm going to be rewriting my test in a few more weeks. So I might come on here every Saturday and do a live stream. And this consists of me studying and getting my license. So, you know, if you guys want to jump in, talk, help me, encourage me, give me some advice, guidance, or whatever, 
I'm all up for it. And I just wanted to put this out to you guys today because I felt this feels more like this needs a live episode. And when it comes to 3D printing, don't get discouraged. The hardest thing about 3D printing, I'm going to say, is leveling your bed. It seems to be the Achilles heel of 3D printing. Now, <clears throat> leveling a bed is not like taking a level and just leveling it. Leveling a bed means getting the nozzle and bed trammed together that you get the best layer possible when it puts down its first layer. Sorry, need a little sip of a pop there. So you're probably asking, what does that mean? Um, well, tramming a bed um, is moving your nozzle around to four corners of the bed, wherever there's a knob to adjust. And you want to make sure that your bed and your your nozzle are just right. Now, there are other options, like a BL Touch and Easy ABL from TH3D. Uh, which I both, which I might, which I do happen to have the BL Touch right here. It hasn't been put on the bed, but I do happen to own one. Um, right now, I just haven't had the time to put it together. That's the honest God truth. It's a lot of work because I got to thread the wires through the sock and do all the extra wiring I have to do because my, what the machine I'm going to be putting this on has a direct drive already. Now, you're probably going, what's a direct drive? What am I talking about? I'm going into a little bit of the woods here, but since uh, someone in my chat has kind of mentioned uh, this part right here, the BL Touch. Yes, I have a BL Touch, and I just haven't had time to put it on. I've been that busy. It's been a, uh, since I work in 3D printing all the time, and I'm around 3D printers all the time, I tend to see not to work on my printers. <laughs> I'm glad I've had enough headaches with the printers I have at work. <laughs> but anyways, that's a different story. But um, the object of my printer is it has a direct drive. The reason I went direct drive is for certain type of materials require direct drive units. Where doing it through a uh, Bowden tube is almost, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not dangerous, but kind of hard to do. Especially dealing with uh, TPU with a that's like a wet noodle and that's stuff like a Ninja Flex. It's like a freaking wet noodle trying to put it through a Bowden tube, and a Bowden tube is how we how most drives are done. They usually go through a Bowden into the printing head, and then the head heats up the um, heats up the filament, and the filament comes out, and then it moves around the moves around a uh, usually piece of glass or metal depending on what your bed is, and prints whatever it needs to print on that surface. And then goes layer by layer by layer by layer by layer. Simple explanation of what a, what a 3D printer does. The object is, is that putting plastic, laying plastic down is kind of an art form because your beds could be lopsided a little when they come from the factory. They, they can warp, they can be anything you want. So training a bed is very important to learn how to do first before getting like a BL touch or anything. And that way, if a BL touch is to fail or your ABL fails or something like that, you notice what's going on. You've seen it happen. That's why I always tell people, get used to leveling your own bed first, then start using a BL touch. It's just my theory and my thoughts, personally. But the idea of uh, with printing software and everything else, it's not that hard. You just basically download what's known as an STL file. You put it into a slicer. 90% of the slicers nowadays are set to know every printer out there in the market. You just select your printer, what type of printer you own, and you just select that in your way you go. Um, as you get more into knowing about your printer, then I would recommend looking at other slicers, learning a little bit more about the printer, and then you can actually improve your quality of print. Now, granted, I am also offering the service that if you need something printed, you can contact me. I'll be more than happy enough to walk you through your printer and get your printer up and running perfectly. But once again, that's a different side of the story. All that content is actually covered on the Canadian Maker Project, which is my other channel that I work for, which I explained to you guys. And it's been a bumpy road getting there. But... 
here I'm kind of surprised at the amount of people. It's over 170 people. So I want to thank all you fans that are out there that watch the show. Thank you so much for being there. And if you are looking forward to me doing my testing here, I welcome you all to come in. I'm looking probably Saturdays at 8 o'clock. I'm going to start doing my testing rounds. But I'm going to be doing them throughout the whole week. So you might go and say, hey, Ron, that's, yeah, here's a way that you can remember this better. And you might just go, yeah, that question does seem kind of weird. I would, why did you answer that question, answer that? You know, I'll just, you know, certain things that may come up in the questions. Now, granted, I'm a Canadian, so my test is going to be different from the U.S. Uh, for a U.S. person, it's, I believe it's 35 questions you guys have to answer. And it's, um, you got your technician, general, and then you got your extra. For us, it's only two. Basic and advanced. So your basic will allow you to write your exam and allow you on two meters and 70 centimeters and six meters UHF, VHF. Then you, if you score over 80% on your test, then you get UHF, VHF, and all HF. Yeah, we get all HF. So we can be on 20, 10, 17, 40. Doesn't matter. We have a spectrum of the whole band. If you're in, if you're looking at the Canadian Advanced, that basically goes into you can build your own radio. You can build your own antennas. That's how advanced the advanced gets into. A lot like the uh, advanced for um, stateside, your extra. It's pretty intense. Uh, I've read the book already for the advanced, and the advanced is something I've actually kind of gravitated a little bit more to than the basic, which is kind of weird, but uh, that's why my tech mind works. I guess it's all the technology in the background that my head thinks about. But anyways, guys, I know this was up up front. I know I released it right away. I wasn't planning on uh, putting out a well-made video, only because I want to be with, live with you guys and talk to you. But like I said, Saturday starting, I guess it would be April. What would that be? That would be April what? That'll be April 24th. I'll start the uh, live stream. I'm going to try to start it around 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So, you know what? I invite you here to come on, talk with me, ask me questions if you want to. That's what I'm here for. And um, advance myself into getting my advanced license so I can take that G90 and get out into a park and uh, hopefully not have to kill some zombies. <laughs> Uh, I was talking to one of my friends. We were going to make a joke video to put it at the beginning of one of my uh, POTA streams. I was going to say, are you tired of going to a park and finding it overrun with zombies? Have nothing to fear. The Wolf River Coil TIA now has a new device. The zombie killing spikes. That's right. If you want to get that park right, put on your new spikes and kick those zombies butts and POTA fun. So never do you have to miss another POTA activation. With the zombie spike 1000. <laughs> Anyways, guys, have some fun. Hopefully, you, you got a couple of good laughs out of my little zombie line. But um, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, putting some more videos together for you guys. Anyways, uh, take care. Thanks for watching. And like always, 73 and have fun. Talk to you guys next one.